Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We're here in the J11 today. We're going to be fighting an F15 uh, EX with a whole lot of AMRAMs on it. I think it's got 16. And uh, I have AWACS and he has AWACS, so it should get interesting. So I'll be shooting the Chinese PL-15s here today. Um, I'm also carrying R-77s instead of PL-12s, but um, none of that's really going to matter. Um, those are more short-range Fox 3s. I kind of need to hit them with the PL-15s if I really want to make this work. Um, having a look at the data link here, uh, you'll see that we have three guys. Uh, this is his AWACS, this is me, and this is my AWACS. Oh, and that's him. There he goes. He just came up on data link. And you can tell from the uh, chevrons versus the circles on the back, which one's friendly, which one's hostile. So we have everybody now on data link. Um, you can tell from this line how fast he's going. And the longer that line, the faster he's going. And you can tell from this line how high he is. Again, the longer this line, the higher he's flying. So you can look at his AWACS and you can re you can see it's not flying that fast, but it's flying pretty high. All right, and there you go. Now you know how to read the data link for anybody who didn't already know that. I know a lot of you guys already knew that, but there's always some new people coming to the channel. Uh, by the way, thank you to all of you for subscribing. I appreciate you all. Now, the main problem we're going to have here today is the sheer amount of AMRAMs that are going to be slung in my general direction. Um, and it would be interesting if somebody was to do the math Tell me in the comment section, because I wasn't able to find the cost of a PL-12 missile, but it'd be interesting to figure out the cost of how many AMRAMs he shoots at me versus how many PL-12s, or sorry, PL-15s I shoot at him, right? Figure out the cost of the engagement, whether it's worth it to have an F-15 that's carrying, you know, 16 AMRAMs versus a flanker that's only carrying like four. And flankers were always famous for having a, a, an insane amount of hard points. You know, everybody was like, how can they carry so many missiles? Well, it kind of seems like they're, you know, kind of being trumped by F-15s now. Like, you're looking at these missile trucks that are coming out. And I'm pretty sure at, at one point the U.S. even played with the idea of having a C-130 that was just dropping AMRAMs out of the back, <laughs> you know? And they were just being guided on by AWACS or like F-35s or maybe even F-22s, whatever the capabilities are there. You know, that'd be pretty funny. But uh, we are getting into range now. Uh, the only problem with the C-130 thing is it's kind of slow relative to an F-15 or something. So I don't know how that would affect the uh, effectiveness of the missile. And it might be why it's not really a realistic tactic today you know we've already talked about how initial speed matters in these engagements looking at the data link here we can see he's now very high and very fast so i would imagine the engagement is about to kick off here all right just trying to get him on radar here i mean i have him but unable to lock uh, of course the f-15 outranges me got him locked now and uh, we'll send off a pl-15 here fox 3 And we're not going to hang out up here at the higher altitude where it'll be easier for his missiles to hit me. I'm going to go ahead and start cranking to the left here. It doesn't matter left or right. And uh, we'll just reduce altitude as we go.
You see this ATK on the HUD here. This indicates when it flashes like this, it indicates that I'm uh, outside or going to be very soon outside the gimbal limit. So then I know to just turn into him a little bit, make sure the radar continues to keep a lock on him. We'll go ahead and recommit here for a third, or sorry, a second PL-15, Fox 3. And once again, we'll crank. You'll see the flashing of the ATK once again at the bottom of the HUD here. Try to keep that as long as I can. He is defending. You can see him on data link here. He's actually cold, but that means he probably has uh, AMRAMs out on me. Again, AMRAMs can be fired in track while scan mode or TWS. Uh, this means that I won't necessarily hear a launch notification for them on my radar warning receiver or RWR therefore I have to make assumptions so I'm actually feeling pretty confident here so I'm gonna recommit any missiles he fired at me didn't seem to have tracked so I'm gonna get close try to be offensive as fast as I can be um, oh lost the lock here stand by let's get that lock I'll shoot an R-77 at him. I don't want to waste any more PL-15s. I need those. I got two more. And I'd like to use those once we get a little bit closer. But I'd like to make him defend. The more missiles I shoot at him, the more I force him to defend. Um, the more situational awareness he'll lose. And increase the probability of me maybe killing him. At the end of the day, that is an F-15. He has a better radar than me. Um, and he's got more missiles. So... The only advantage I have is the fact that he's got so many AMRAMs, he might be slow. You know, that's the only thing. Alright, let's uh, give him a Fox 3 here. An R-77 Fox 3. And we'll defend. I'll probably do a full 360 loop here in case he fires any uh, actually let me recommit because <laughs> I see on data link he's defending again oh never mind see that's what I was saying that's the AMRAMs so he did get an AMRAM off at me I'm gonna have to defend now I was gonna try to be uh, offensive very quickly but we'll play it safe It's very difficult to, you know, hide or be sneaky with the F-15's radar. Um, so I can't do any of that sneaky stuff that the flankers like to do. Also, you'll notice we're over flat terrain, which makes it even more difficult to dodge AMRAMs. Um, really dodge any missile. Go ahead and get this lock here. And Fox 3. It's another R-77 there. Start defending. Right. Things are not going too bad right now. Like I said, the only reason I think we're not struggling more is because he's a very heavy missile truck F-15. Honestly, I think that these F-15s are intended to be used like, uh, you know, the C-130, except they can fire these AMRAMs at faster speeds, so it makes the AMRAM more dangerous. And they're probably expected to be guided in by F-35s, other forms of data link, you know, things like that. We'll go ahead and recommit here. He's definitely got endurance on me, though, with all those AMRAMs. He can stay in this fight for a very long time. Fox 3. That's a PL-15. And you heard that momentary beep there. He definitely got a missile off at me. You'll hear it. There it is. Yeah.
All right, things are gonna get pretty spicy here pretty quickly. I have one more Fox 3 left. Uh, he probably still has plenty of Amrams. So this now is a problem. Normally I would fire this Fox 3 and then go home. And the F-15 would win air superiority over this area, even though he didn't kill me, but I didn't manage to kill him and he stayed here, you know, and I had to run away, so. But in this fight, I'm gonna go in for the kill. Somebody has to die here today. And if I can just get him to hold this last PL-15, then I might walk away with a victory, who knows? I'm locked. He has no hot on me. Inside of 25 kilometers. Fox 3. Hopefully that hits him. And I'm and I have two Fox. Or sorry, I have four Fox 2s left. Uh, PL 8s, I think they are. Defending this missile. So if that PL-15 doesn't hit him, I'm gonna have to start slinging Fox 2s and hope that one of them, you know, hits him when he's not paying attention. Which kind of seems like that's what's gonna have to happen, because I don't think I killed him. Oh, he's not on daily link. Oh, there he is. Okay. Okay, never mind. He's still alive. And he's got Amrams out on me. Fox 2. And the range on those Fox 2s is not good, but I'm just kind of hoping that because they don't give an RWR notification, that he might not notice and he might fly right into him. And it might hit him right in the face. Here's another one. Fox 2 again. Yeah, he's getting pretty close to me now. And I'll recommit here. Actually, we're going to turn away a little bit because I'm feeling a little scared from that AMRAM. I'm gonna recommit here and get another Fox 2 off at him, and I'll keep the last one for the merge. Let's go ahead and turn in. Alright. Let me see if I can get him. Whoa! Right engine fire. Right engine fire. Alright guys, real quick TAC view review here. Um, Alright, this is by AWAX, me over here. We have uh, Peregrine over here, big thank you to Peregrine for helping out with this video. We have uh, NATO AWAX. And we'll see, we got both of us climbing. Climbing for altitude, we've talked about this in previous videos. He ditches his tank early because he wants to, probably because he's already pretty heavy with all those AMRAMs, so he ditches that. That'll help him reduce weight a little bit so he can climb. Um, I'm over here climbing as well. Let me see, Mach 1.09. So I'm actually faster than him. Look at him struggling to get above Mach 1. You know, that's one heavy missile truck. It's like an 18-wheeler. 
even though it's an F-15. And he fires an AMRAAM at a fairly long distance. Look at that, 16 nautical miles. I guess it's fairly normal for an AMRAAM launch. And, uh, alright, that missile's in the air. He fire. he double taps, he shoots a second one. Um, and I give him one. And so remember, we go into high altitude because the air is thinner up high, so that increases the range because it decreases drag and friction on our on our missiles, and he does the same thing. Um, and you can see once you fire the missile, the missile climbs even more because it wants to go more into thin air. Uh, this is generally called loftic, and it increases the range as the missile increases its gravitational potential energy and also climbs into thinner air, less drag, and then on the way down, it converts that gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy as it tries to hit the target. So lofting kind of increases the range of a missile, which is why you see these AMRAMs doing the same thing. They get fired, and they go up. This was generally first started, I believe, with the Phoenix missile. The Phoenix missile, everybody knows, is one of those that went up and came down on top of your head at like 80 nautical miles. Um, and lofting is obviously range dependent as well. If your bandit is 10 miles away, missile's not going to loft. It's not necessary at that point. Um, we got that PL-15. I recommit here. I fire another PL-15 at about 40-ish miles, 37 miles. You can see his two AMRAMs are actually tracking pretty well here. Um, but I don't get RWR notifications for the first one. The second one looks like it also... Oh, it goes for the... Does it go for the PL-15? No, it doesn't. It looked like it from that angle. Uh, both of those AMRAMs seem to get scrapped from high altitude, mostly because I think he, bra he breaks away from the lock as he defends aggressively against my two PL-15s. Um, his speed is much better here. You can see he, he was about Mach 1 here at the on the deck, and I'm much slower now. Um, he fires an AMRAM from on the deck it actually is doing pretty well as far as another one you see how like he's just launching these amrams you know what i mean he's very very um generous with them <laughs> uh my r77 doesn't do anything there complete waste i turn back around um not sure what's going on with that amram look at that what's going on here does it maybe bite off on the R-77? I don't know what's going on. But that missile does almost a 180 and ends up in the water. Not almost, it actually does do a 180 and hits right in the water. Um, another R-77 here, again, just to freak him out. I want him to come closer and closer to me. Um, so that I can hit him with the PL-15. Just at these ranges, I didn't really love the probability of launching my last two PL-15s. Uh, we end up here, he fires a Fox-3. Um, at this point we are within 10 nautical miles, so this would be the Mar, right, right here. This would be the Mar minimum abort range. We talked about all these concepts in the last video, so I'm not going to touch on it all over again. Uh, we got on the last BVR video, if you're interested, I think it was the China-India one. So if you want to see that, go back and watch those concepts there. Um, PL-15 actually does a great job trying to get him. Wow, look at that thing go. And just hits at the... Oh, wow, that missile almost had him. Hits the ground right at the end there. That missile, AMRAM, doesn't actually do very well. I recommit here at 11 miles. He fires an AMRAM. I fire my PL-15. And unfortunately, that one does not track like the other one. Complete waste of a PL-15. And he still has like, I think, eight AMRAMs left. <laughs> Which is funny enough, that's the actual number that the normal F-15C would start the engagement with. If it, if it just decked itself out with AMRAMs, it would start with eight. I think he's got eight left at this point. Or like nine or ten left at this point. So he's got a tremendous amount of AMRAMs left. Um, this is a Fox 2, and again, you can see it's got nowhere the range, but because it doesn't have an RWR notification being an, uh, a Fox 2, I figured if I shoot it, and if he's not paying attention, it becomes super aggressive, he'll just fly forward to try to kill me, and this might just hit him right in the face. And I kind of did this with the Eurofighter video a little while back, and it worked well for me, so 
I was doing it here. I have four Fox 2, so I was being, you know, a little bit more generous with them. Here's another Fox 2, hoping for the same thing. Again, I'm, I'm not getting close enough to him for this to work. I have nothing to hide behind in terms of terrain. And uh, here's a, a third Fox 2. <laughs> and I'm just desperately trying to survive this. And he's just keeping me at arm's length by shooting, you know, multiple AMRAMs. <laughs> and... And he kills me right there. And that Fox 2 almost actually hits him. No way. Does it almost? Yeah, it does almost hit him. Oh my god. It almost worked. <laughs> it almost worked. <laughs> Alright. Well, there you go. F15 victory. Very, very cool. Good kill. Alright, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.